Contention one, carbon leakage. A carbon tax is a bad idea because of carbon leakage. U.S. companies will move offshore to emit carbon in other countries, which harms the U.S. economy and causes more CO2 emissions. This is already happening. According to Susan Goldenberg, writing for The Guardian, quote, the world's richest countries are outsourcing their carbon pollution to China and other uh, rising economies. Since 2000, carbon dioxide emissions for China and other rising economies have more than doubled. A growing share of global emissions is released in the manufacture of products that are traded across international borders. And a carbon tax will only make it worse. According to Derek Morgan, writing for the Heritage Foundation, quote, a carbon tax in the U.S. will have zero direct effect on foreign emissions. Unilateral uh, action by the U.S. will have very little effect on global total uh, emissions. A unilateral U.S. carbon tax will increase foreign emissions because of phenomenal car carbon leakage. As energy intensive uh, industries relocate from the U.S. to other nations such as China, GHG emissions and toxic pollutants could increase more than they would in the, if the industries remain in the U.S. Contention 2. Wealth gap. A carbon tax increases the gap between the rich and the poor. According to Clifton Parker writing for the Stanford study, quote, the heaviest burden for climate change regulation cost falls on the people, especially lower income people, and not corporations, according to new Stanford research. For the poor, basic necessities take a bigger chunk of the budget than for the rich. Households in the lowest income pay, pay more than twice what house households in the highest 10%. This is a huge deal. The wider the wealth gap, the more it harms the economy and threatens democracy. According to Michael Hilsvig, writing for the LA Times, quote, rising economic inequality in the United States is hampering economic growth and punching holes in social fabric. Inequality might also spur a political instability. The affluent exercise this proportionate influence on the political process. Some income inequality is necessary, but at extreme levels, income inequality can harm sustained economic growth. The U.S. is approaching that threshold. Contention 3, alternatives. We don't need a carbon tax because there are better options. A cap and trade system will solve this problem much better than a carbon tax. According to Fred Cobb, writing for Yale Environment 360, quote, the advantage of emission capped is clear. A cap puts a legal limit on pollution. A tax does not. Only a cap with strong emission reduction targets can guarantee that we achieve the environmental goal. When we create a market that rewards emission and reduction, we put the vast know-how, manufacturer base, and investment capital of the private sector to work. A cap and trade gives us an environment guarantee that you can't get with the tax. It cleans the air, reduces our oil dependence, creates jobs, and averts a looming environmental crisis. Contingent 4. Job loss. A tax on carbon would prevent businesses from investing and expanding as a result of higher energy costs. The result is a loss of jobs. According to David Kutzer writing for the Heritage Foundation, quote, since the overwhelming, since the overwhelming majority of America's needs are met by carbon emitting fossil fuels, regulations directly raise the cost of electricity, gasoline, and home heating oil. Businesses will likely pass those costs onto consumers. If a company had to absorb the cost, high energy costs will squeeze the profit margins and prevent businesses from investing and expanding. The result is a higher energy cost, lower income, and fewer jobs. This is a huge deal. Unemployment creates a vicious cycle that brings down the economy. According to Stephen Simpson writing from Investopedia, quote, unemployment leads to higher payment from state and federal governments for unemployment benefits. Those, gov those governments are no longer collecting the same levels of income tax as before, forcing the government to borrow money. The production of those workers leaves the economy at which reduces the GDP. As pro team, we believe that carbon tax should be in initiated for multiple benefits. Contention 1, global warming. First, global warming is happening and is caused by humans. Overwhelming scientist consensus supports this. According to meta-analysis by James Powell, Powell reviewed more than 24,000 scientific articles on climate change published between 2013 and 2014. Powell identified 69,406 authors, four of whom rejected climate change as being caused by human emissions. That's a one in every 17,352 scientists. I found that only 0.006% who rejected it. Scientists are virtually unanimous. Anthropogenic global warming is true. Second, a carbon tax can help. It is the single best way to cut off CO2 emissions and prevent the worst of global warming. Droughts, floods, and superstorms, according to Laura Tyson, a professor at Berkeley Business School. A carbon tax is the most effective way to discourage carbon consumption and lower the risk of catastrophic climate changes. In May, carbon dioxide reached 400 parts per million. And UN negators have set a limit at 450 parts per million for irreversible changes. The world across this border limit in a matter of decades. Evidence of climate change is everywhere. Melting Arctic ice, extreme weather events, in including record droughts, heat waves, and epic superstorms. Our carbon tax is the most effective and simple way to reduce carbon. Carbon emissions have an unpriced social cost. 
A carbon a tax on carbon would reflect these costs and discourage emissions. Producers and consumers adjust these behave adjust to these behaviors. A any tax on carbon would be important in the step in the right direction. Contention two: green economy. A carbon tax would help the U.S. move towards a green economy by boosting the economic growth while benefiting the environment. According to Richard Caperton, writing for the Center of American Progress, a carbon tax will be paired with additional investments in clean energy. There is also a great need to repair transportation and infrastructure. Some revenues from the carbon tax can be directed towards these sectors. These investment benefits the economy. Infrastructure investments would help people to work, help would help people go to work. Even after protecting low-income consumers and investing in infrastructure, billions of dollars would be left over to address our national debt. Climate change, economic growth, and fiscal responsibilities may not appear to be intimately linked, but they all have different causes. However, a price on carbon can make a significant contrib contribution to solving these challenges. Contention 3. Debt reduction. The U.S. urgently needs to address its bu budget deficit. Revenue generated from a carbon tax would directly help reduce it. Sebastian Rashi, writing for the John Relly at MIT, says the U.S. faces a large federal deficit and all parties recognize that we need to eventually bring it under control. The recession greatly exacerbated the, the deficit situation by reducing tax receipts. The debt to GDP ratio would rise to 77% in 2021, far above the roughly 35 to 40% that was maintained for the most of the world post World War II period. While raising taxes is never popular, a carbon tax would be a potentially win win situation. First, carbon, re carbon tax revenue is allowed a neutral of revenue neutral relief and on personal income taxes, corporate income taxes, or payroll taxes, or you could or could be used to avoid and limit the cuts of social programs or defense spending. CBO estimate that the, it would raise on the order of $1.25 trillion over a 10-year period. This is a big deal. Fear to deal with the desk risk prolonged economic decline, according to Romeo Bossi, research manager of the Heritage Foundation, the America is on America's on a big dangerous pleasure path. Okay, you may have first question. Oh, go ahead. No, you may have first question. Okay. Uh, you so first. for debt reduction, for under your contention of debt re reduction, he says that your carbon tax will estimate a uh, raise of <coughs> order of one point two five trillion over a ten year period. All right. So we have to consider that America is about 18, 17 trillion dollars in debt. And this is over a 10 year period. So my question is, how is this gonna have a really strong impact on the US when well, it's just so much in debt already? We're not just gonna send um, that money directly into the debt. We're actually gonna invest in infrastructure and other things that create even more money than we started with and put that into the debt and it'll actually make a larger impact than just 1.25 trillion over a 10 year period. You, you say that you are gonna put this money to invest in other stuff, like for example, for what? Uh, for as um, my second continuous states, green economy. Um, we can invest in green economy, help natural resources, uh, move away from oil, and create um, a better economy. But the U.S. needs oil, though. That's the problem. Too much of America is too dependent on oil. You you bring up this green co green economy argument, but the U basically all of U.S. is really dependent on oil. The transition from oil to green economy is going to take a long time. What do you have to say about that? Uh, well, first of all, we have um, almost 40 years to transition from that. It's not, it's not, it's sure like we're dependent on oil, but we can still switch. Now let's move on to another question. In response to your, in response to your, um, in response to your carbon leakage, uh, how would um, carbon leakage work if there's still, um, if we still um, put tariffs around and we can help uh, create a border against uh people to moving out so we can't import those goods so what, you, what you're telling me is that you're trying to stop those companies from leaving yeah we're trying to stop order. them from um uh create um sending their products to china to manufacture well the u the u.s really doesn't have the right to do that because they can't stop companies Actually, from leaving the u.s the com there's billions there's hundreds of thousands of uh, companies in the u.s you can't stop all of them and how are you going to build a border in the first place uh, first of all, we're not building a border. It's a, a tariff. Tariff's, tariff is a tax on imported goods. And we're not going to prevent them from moving out. We're just preventing them from um, um, trying to send things out. We're trying to. It doesn't mean that's going to 
like it's not positive, but it's gonna influence them to just stay and pay for the carbon tax. But the and thing, it, you're, in other so you say you're gonna stop the companies by using a tariff, which is a tax. But it's just a little tax. How it's not gonna stop a company from just leaving the U.S. If I was a company, or if anybody were a company, I, I have billions of dollars in my stocks, or I have billions of dollars in bank. If you're just gonna put a tiny tax on me, it's still not gonna uh, stop, stop. I know, but stop if we from. make the tax, if we make the tariff larger than the tax, then It'll, then they won't want to move out. <coughs> Ready? Yep. Let's start time now. So let's start at the top of their flow. My opponent's first contention was global warming, but this is flawed for six reasons. First, it doesn't stop warming. A carbon tax just won't reduce CO2 emissions that much. Brad Plumer, writing for the Washington Post, says, quote, A carbon tax might not make a significant dent on U.S. global warming emissions. Modern economies are so heavily dependent on fossil fuels that there's only so much we can reasonably cut back. Alternatives aren't readily available yet. With the carbon tax, emissions do start declining, but by 2030, emission levels stalled. The United States wouldn't get anywhere near the 80% cut by 2050. Second, the impact is far away. Global warming won't have large effects for decades. We can develop many other solutions before them, and we need to focus on short-term problems like the economy. Third, even if you don't buy the argument that global warming isn't a big deal, remember that a cap-and-trade solves better. If you refer back to our third contention, we're telling you that with an alternative of a cap-and-trade, we can provide a hard cap on CO2 emissions. Remember that if you're going to be voting on the environment in today's debate, then you're going to have to vote um, on the con side because there's no hard cap if you go with a carbon tax system. After that, fourth, a tax fails because the rich can buy as much carbon as they want and ignore the tax. Remember that companies that have billions of dollars can just ignore this tax and they can still pollute as much carbon as they want to and they can't do the same with a cap and trade system fifth it's not a big deal because people are understanding the problem and solving it on their own a, a carbon tax isn't needed in today's society you see this with the nissan leaf and the amount of consumer demand there is for products like these that help the uh, environment after that a unilateral tax by the united states won't make a difference and uh this is shown by uh, a carbon tax being insignificant, Richard W. Rand, senior fellow at the Cato Institute, writes, quote, at most there would estimate a U.S. contribution would only be about 0.2 Celsius or 7% in global warming. Does it make sense for the United States to impose a carbon tax when emissions from the rest of the world, notably India and China, would be responsible for 93% of the temperature rise? It doesn't. Now let's go on to their second contention where they're talking to you about a green economy. This is flawed for four reasons. First, more jobs are lost than gained. Renewable energy is just too expensive. According to Jorn Lomberg writing for The Slate, quote, job creation cannot be defended as another benefit of well-meaning green policies. The number of jobs that these policies create is likely to be offset or worse by the number of jobs that they destroy. Second, the tax revenue will be wasted and not spent on good things. Remember that the government as a whole is very inefficient. It doesn't care about profits and it's not uh, anything like a company where they actually care to put money exactly where it belongs. The government wastes a lot of money all the time, and that's exactly what's going to happen with these tax revenues. After that, don't buy this argument because a carbon tax increases the rich poor gap. Remember, you can uh, cross apply our second contention where we're telling you that if you implement a carbon tax, there are going to be increased taxes on the poor and they spend the most amount of money on home heating fuel. This disproportionately affects them and this decreases jobs as a whole. After that, don't uh, buy this economy argument because there's not going to be any money in the economy because of our carbon leakage contention. If you look back to our evidence, you see that the second that a country implements a carbon tax, there's going to be an increase of emissions in other countries simply because these companies that want to emit CO2 emissions will go over to those countries. That being said, let's go on to their final contention, which was debt reduction. Here, I have six responses. First, the debt is already being solved. Obama is reducing the deficit and spending now. Captain and Ferretta writes in the U.S. News, quote, The U.S. budget deficit is now the smallest it's ever been since Obama took office. The deficit has shrunk a percent of gross domestic product for the last five years. Second, there's a small effect. There are other many bigger drivers of our deficit. Remember, Henry talks to you about it, this in Crossfire, where he tells you that over 10 years, there's going to be uh, barely $1 trillion while we have a $14 trillion debt. Third, this takes from the poor, cross apply what I talked to you about the rich poor gap, and this shows that this is uh, abusing the poor. And fifth, there's going to be carbon leakage, and this hurts the uh, economy as a whole. Thank you. Now, in response to their carbon leakage argument, they are wrong about carbon leakage. Number one, it won't, har it won't happen. The US can increase tariffs on countries without a carbon tax, so it will balance out and companies won't move overseas. 
according to Lauren Summers, a professor and a former president of Harvard University. Some worry that taxing fossil fuels will encourage offshoring. A well-designed tax will be levied on imports coming from countries that did not impose their own carbon levies, and such a tax is compatible with the World Trade Organization rules. Two, it definitely affects consumers. Even if the con proves that producers will move overseas, the carbon tax would still affect American consumers. People would still buy less fossil fuels, so it's still a step in the right direction. In response to wealth gap, number one, carbon taxes don't hurt the poor. There will be exemptions for low-income people, according to Richard Caperton, writing for the Center for American Progress. The CBO explored seven different options for reducing the regressivity of a carbon tax. An income tax rebate or a payroll tax rebate can be very effective in addressing the challenge. These rebates reach a very broad number of people and can be targeted to specific income levels. The overall reform package is progressive. 2. Global warming makes the wealth gap even worse. Natural disasters and resource scarcity hurts poor people more since they don't have as many resources to escape or recover. We need to stop global warming if we want to close the wealth gap. In response to alternatives, 1. A carbon tax is better and has many advantages over cap and trade, according to Charles Kamenoff, writing for the Yale Environment 360. Only a carbon tax can quickly drive the transition from fossil fuels to renewable and efficient energy. It is far superior to a cap and trade. Price certainty, the clear price signals from a carbon tax stand, in stark contrast to the price volatility in the endemic to cap and trade. Simplicity and immediacy. British, Com British Columbia implemented a carbon tax in five months. North America's cap and trade system took five years of negotiation. Two, there's no benefit. Cap and trade causes all the same problems with a carbon tax. There's no way it could be better. It's still going to harm the fossil fuel industry, so it's better to go with the carbon tax since it solves global warming better. And finally, in response to job loss, number one, a carbon tax would actually lead to more jobs and overall economic growth. According to Rick McGahey, writing for CNN, if the, U <laughs> if the U.S. implements even a modest carbon tax, we would generate $170 billion by 2030 to create jobs and build bridges, roads and schools, reduce budget deficits, and cut taxes to spur private investment. Many fossil fuel job losses have already taken place. Carbon taxes are not the real threat to coal miners, greedy energy companies are. We have to create sustainable economic growth. Jobs in the fossil fuel industry that destroy the environment are not good jobs. A carbon tax helps create a green economy where the economy can grow without environmental damage. Thank you. Go. Can I have the first question? Sure. Okay, so um, you say you're going to exempt the poor from the um, argument that you made against our wealth gap contention. Doesn't this mean that a carbon tax won't be effective? So when we're saying we're exempting the poor, we're trying to kind of make the impact for poor people less because of these progressive packages and the reform package. So the okay. impact that the carbon taxes on, has on poor people will be less than you think it will Okay, be. first of all, this isn't even allowed in public forum because this is a plan. You're telling uh, exactly what the government should do. You can't say you want to exempt carbon taxes for a specific range of people. So like you shouldn't even have that argument as a whole there. But even if you exempt these people, isn't that a large chunk of people in the United States? All right, so number one, uh, responding against your plan argument, I can have this because it's just saying that the carbon taxes don't hurt the poor and we can- No, there, you're there, telling I, me that- wait, can I finish my response? Sure. I'm just saying that there is a solution to the problem that you have presented me. And number two, it does, it doesn't like, I have to agree that it doesn't separate all of the impact from this tax, but it does generate revenue that these people can use, I mean, that the government can use to create more reform packages and also, I mean, oh, oil wait, has wait. been cheap for a while, so they can use that money that they've been saving to pay for this. Okay, so we're going to get money from poor people. We're going to put it towards debt reduction when there's going to be an increase of job loss. And there are going to be people without jobs in the United States, but we're still going to spend money on debt. All right, not only poor people, and I'm just talking about the whole economy, because once we generate this money, we're going to be able to inv like invest in more things, like I said in my contentions, like buildings, bridges, and roads that will create jobs for low-income people. Now can we move on to another question? Sure. So... In your response to global warming, mm -hmm. you say that um, we can ignore the attacks in your fourth response, correct? Uh, in my fourth response, what I tell you is uh, simply that the tax fails because the rich can buy as much carbon as they want to and ignore the tax. Well, is, is this tax evasion or what are you trying to say here? Okay, look, what I'm trying to tell you is when I have, let, let's say I have a million dollars. Let's say the tax is 10 cents per ton of CO2 emissions. 
that tax doesn't affect me because that's only 10 cents. So I'm still going to buy as many uh, carbon credits as I want to. I'm still going to emit as much pollution as I want to. And it's not going to have any effect on the atmosphere. Okay. So the droughts that you talk about, the super storms that you talk about in your global warming contention, they can only be solved by a capitalist <coughs> system. Okay, can I ask another question? Oh, actually, it's my okay, sure. okay, so you talk a lot about the economy. That's what your second and third contentions are focused on. But how is there going to be uh, an economic growth in the United States when there's carbon leakage? All right, so carbon leakage won't happen because, number one, we have tariffs to stop these countries from going. Sure. Oh, wait, so we're going to decrease our foreign relations in every single country so that we prevent a couple of companies from moving? Isn't, aren't you restricting companies' rights by doing that and but decreasing foreign relations? But we're benefiting the environment relations? for this. Okay, so you from. could just go with the cap-and-trade alternative. Is everyone ready now? Yep. Sure. <coughs> so, our, f our first main point was carbon leakage. And your response to that was first, it won't happen. But that's wrong because this restricts companies' rights and it goes against. And, uh, and cap-and-trade is just a better option. Uh, two, your second response to that was that it affects consumer and has little impact. But a cap-and-trade system has a huge impact and affects everyone. Uh, I mean, carbon tax affects everyone. Uh, your, our second main point was the wealth cap. And your first response to that was that it doesn't hurt the poor and exempts them. But this is called playing. And, and you cannot have this argument. And even if you do, it does not separate them and exempt them at all. Your second response to that was that global, it was global warming. And it makes the wealth gap even worse. But a cap and trade system solves this problem. It, it uh, decreases the wealth gap. And a carbon tax doesn't, serve, uh, doesn't solve this problem well. Our third main point was alternatives. And your response to that was carbon tax is better and it makes it faster and drives it. But my response to that is a carbon tax is actually worse. For example, it did not even work in British Columbia. It, it didn't work until 2012. What, it didn't work for a long time. So, and your second response was that it had no benefits. A, a carbon tax had no benefits. But, I mean, a, a cap and trade system had no benefits. But, but a, carbon, a cap and trade system stops carbon, uh, carbon leakage. And it's just better overall. And it's, uh, it leads to a better economy. Our last main point was job loss. And your response to that was that it leads to more jobs. But it wouldn't because of carbon leakage. Dang. <laughs> you guys are already ready? Yep. Okay. Wait, hold on. Okay, I'll wait for you. Okay. You have like 18 spawns in your Yeah. Six. Six. Yeah, six. Okay. Five. That's okay, first I'm going to um, summarize um, global warming. Global warming is basically saying that um, anthropogenic global warming is true and that it's harmful and the only way to solve it is through a carbon tax. They respond to this by saying it doesn't stop um, um, that it doesn't actually stop global warming. A carbon tax won't stop global warming, but actually it will because it will inject it. The carbon tax will um, help people not use carbon and they'll move towards a more um, resourceful things such as renewable energy. And so they won't actually use it. Um, they also said that it would um, the impact is um, that it would develop in other ways and we need to focus on other things. But no, we need to focus on it now because the world is already experiencing um, record droughts and um, heat waves and um, global warming is already taking its strike. So we need to act now. They also said that um, that cap and trade is better, but no, it's not better because the theory of a hard cap will be turned into a soft cap. Um, according to a piece of evidence um, from um, Roger Pike, a uh, cap and trade is doomed to fail. Political reality will turn the theory of a hard cap um, into the practice of a very soft cap that ha that has backdoor safety valves and um, and allows the cap to be evaded, so it won't work. Um, and res um, global um, green economy is basically saying that it will it will create a new type of economy that will be beneficial. Um, they said um, they said in response to it that it's um, more the jobs lost um, um, that jobs are being lost, but actually jobs are being being gained. From this through, um, because it's creating new jobs, it also said that it will increase the rich poor gap, but actually no, it'll help it because you can help poor people um, and give money to poor people. And in response, um, and also for um, 
uh, for um, debt reduction. Um, what they um is basically saying that we can help to reduce debt, but they said it's already being solved, but no, it's not being solved. Okay, so you guys as the pro team have to prove that a unilateral carbon tax would be the best option, but. Wouldn't it be better if other countries took part in a mutual uh, alternative? What do you mean by neutral alternative? Okay, so like if a lot of other countries came together and like did uh, implemented a CO2 emission cutting policy. Because US by itself would not have a really drastic effect. Well, we're trying to we're trying to like decrease the carbon emissions in the U.S. and also decrease the global warming emissions as well as the green economy. So, so. the U.S. accounts for less than 0.03 percent of emissions, as I read to you in my response. If we cut emissions in the United States alone, what effect would this have on the droughts, on the superstorms that well, you talk about? Well, we're um, a superpower, so many other countries want to follow us. Is there evidence of this? Well, has this happened the- before? We're one of the most powerful countries in the world. Europe is also one of the, uh, Europe has one of the most powerful nations in the world. They've implemented carbon taxes. No other country has implemented carbon taxes. You see empirically, you implement a carbon tax, it fails. You see this with British Columbia and no one else wants to implement it. Wait, didn't the EU have a cap and trade system? Not a carbon tax? Um, do you like, do you know of when this cap and trade system was implemented, if it was in fact implemented. Do you know when your, like, carbon, do you know when your carbon tax was implemented? Yeah, sure. So the British Columbia carbon tax... Um, well, you just, no, said, you just Europe. said Europe, Yeah. not British Columbia. Okay, Europe <laughs> took part in a carbon tax, and the evidence is simply that the United States and other countries don't have a carbon tax. But you don't have an evidence to prove that the, yeah. that the EU had it in the first place, and the rate of success or failure. When we prompted you to ask about Europe, you, you, you stated that with the response to British Columbia, which is completely different. Okay, All right, let's move like, on to what's your point? Do you have a question? Yeah, British Columbia is part of the EU. So, what? All right, next question. So, in your um, debt reduction connection, you say that Obama is already solving this, right? Yes. But didn't you say that it only the GDP? I mean, the debt decreased only one percent over five years. Uh, yes. That's zero. That's a zero point two decrease. Isn't that really small? We won't be able to. No, Obama is currently implementing an increase of policies to decrease the United States debt. But you know this argument. Uh, your your debt reduction point doesn't really make a difference because because of carbon leakage and its impacts, which you clearly haven't addressed. Carbon leakage. Yes. But we said that we we have said that we can imp- implement tariffs so that these countries can go out and use China as like out. I mean, not only China, but outsource their pollution to other countries. Tariffs so you want you want to take away our position as a superpower because of a carbon tax. No, because no. when we do when we do these tariffs, we might pressure other countries to in- enact a carbon tax also. When we country. implement tariffs, other countries hate us because we're telling them that we don't want to trade with you anymore. We're decreasing our foreign relations. This has been shown in the past. That's why you have organizations like NAFTA to increase free trade and to increase relations. Okay, do you have a question? Oh, that's time. Oh, okay. Now. Okay, so the two main voter issues in this debate were carbon leakage and alternatives. Going to carbon leakage, essentially we're telling you here that if you implement a carbon tax in the United States alone, companies won't like that, they will move overseas. You see this with an increase of CO2 emissions in developing countries like China and India. Remember that the impact of this is that the carbon tax as a whole doesn't work. So if we prove to you in this debate that carbon leakage will occur even at a minute amount, you're not going to be voting for the pro side. Then let's go on to alternatives. Uh, The alternatives contention, essentially what we told you here, was that a carbon tax system is not the correct way to go because it induces carbon leakage, it increases the wealth gap, and it creates job loss. Instead, you should go with the cap and trade system because it provides a hard cap on CO2 emissions and is good for companies. Remember that the impact of this is very big because if we implement a cap and trade system, it solves every single thing the pro has while not having any of the harms of a carbon tax. That being said, let's go on to my opponent's contentions. Their first contention is global warming. Remember that there was no response to my final two um, responses. I told you that attack will fail because companies that have enough money can just pollute as much as they want. Remember that this means that every single impact that they have with droughts and superstorms goes away completely. After that, I also told you that a unilateral tax will not make a difference. The United States doesn't account for a significant amount of CO2 emissions. And so implementing a carbon tax in the United States alone, which is what the pros advocate, for won't have an impact on CO2 emissions. After that, let's go on to their second condition where they talk to you about the green economy. Remember that there were, again, two responses that weren't responded to. The first one was that tax revenue will be wasted. Remember that the government is not an entity that wants to create profit, that 
uh, spends its money very rationally. Remember that this tax won't go to debt reduction. It won't go to the poor. It will go on some obscure thing that we don't know about. After that, they also didn't respond to the fact that there's no money in the economy because of carbon leakage. Remember that this was, an, was another one of our voters. So you can take down this contention entirely on this point. And then debt reduction, remember that there wasn't a response to carbon leakage again, and there wasn't a response to takes from the poor. So at the end of the day, you will be voting con. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Starting. Now, okay, so our, for our two global our two voting issues are number one, global warming. People are dying and they're experiencing natural disasters that are caused by global warming. The effects are already being shown. Like we said, the super storms and the droughts are already happening. That the time frame isn't far away. Like we said in our global warming contention, these UN negotiators have already told us that 450 parts per million is the max that we can reach, and this will be reached in a matter of decades and years. So we have to stop it now before we reach that threshold. We don't have to wait until that actually happens. And also we have a solution that we can solve for the, to, to end global warming. We can use the carbon tax to discourage use of carbon and other oils that causes a decrease in the amount of emissions that we cause, and that'll provide a leadership to other countries, which means the whole world will stop using, the whole world will eventually move away from using oil, which decreases the impact of global warming. Our second voting issue was debt reduction. Our debt is really high, it's 77% of our GDP, and the, um, Okay, the danger level is 90% and we will reach that really, really soon. So addressing the carbon leakage impact, the tariffs discourage companies to go over to and outsource their pollutions in places like China. So, and then eventually that'll decrease our emissions, which will in turn provide other countries and they'll be like, oh, they decrease their emissions, why don't we do that too? And then, <laughs> that's not funny. <laughs> All right, and in response to this, a carbon, a carbon leakage won't happen because like we said, cross supplier are the second point of our second voting issue and wealth gap doesn't matter either because a tax would affect both people equally but um reform packages like we said in their response will help um dissipate the impact towards the poorer people and in response to job loss um i mean they didn't really like make a big impact about it but it still doesn't matter because the, even though jobs are being lost, that still means we're moving away from oil and in response to their alternatives. A cap and trade system fails because the EU tried it and it didn't work out. Thank you. Nice, nice. What's your uh, evidence? Brian, Sean. 